Good afternoon, ma'am. Antara. Hello, Oliver. Uh, yes, ma'am. Am I audible? Yes, yes, yes. All right. Yes. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Shall we start? Yeah, yeah. Okay. A very good afternoon to one and all. On behalf of GRMs, Dr. Dada Vaidya College of Education, Parma Budi, Goa, this is Goretti Falcao, webinar coordinator. extending a warm welcome to all the teachers and students to today's webinar on drama in education techniques for classroom the department of extension services organizes workshops and webinars on various aspects of teaching learning as well as research thus catering to in service teachers from the pre primary primary secondary high secondary right up to the college level if any of the institutions feel the need to such webinars kindly feel free to drop us an email or even call on us on the details available on the brochure dear participants the objective of today's webinar is first to understand drama in education second to learn drama games tools and conventions and third to learn the application of drama in the classroom setup and for this we are happy to have with us madam antara bidev theater in education practitioner she is an assistant professor at gvms dr dada vaidya college of education teaching performing arts and its application in education she is also a freelance writer editor she is also a visiting faculty at msc integrated course goa university at present and she is also a facilitator she was Uh, she has worked in theater in education company national school of drama delhi she is also a guest lecturer at mit adt university pune and i'm uh, and uh, i'm happy to note that she that she is also a costume designer a artist teacher and she is play, uh, playing a number of roles she has done her masters of theater arts from university of mumbai bachelor of arts in economics and she has also been qualified for the ugc net in theater art performing arts she has been awarded by bal bhavan with the bal bhushan award for creative writing and she uh, she knows a number of language besides english konkani marathi hindi bengali spoken as well as sanskrit it's nice to know ma'am you know so many languages and at present currently she is pursuing doctoral her doctoral studies by a thesis titled alternate possibilities of theater in education in india from she is doing a phd from marathwada university aurangabad madam has written a number of plays some of them are topsy turvy tales ek zaruri kagaz which was theater in education based play and another one imaginary which is theater for children she has also acted in plays like pravas the singing tortoise vedharan abhi raat baki hai she has many more plays to her to her credit and we are very happy to have you ma'am over here on this platform uh, thank you for taking your time out uh, we are all eagerly waiting to listen to you over to you ma'am 
thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, when you asked for the uh, CV, I did not know that you were going to like tell the whole of it. But thank you so much. Uh, I'm so glad to be here too. Uh, first of all, uh, may I request everyone to kindly switch on their um, video cameras because it will be much more interesting to interact with live faces. I would like to see the expressions on everyone's faces while we are doing the activities. All right. Okay. I think it will be more fun this way also for all of you. Because this is a uh, drama and education webinar, so we, we can't do drama without expressions, right? So um, let's let me uh, start sharing my screen as well at the same time. Okay, what do you want? You want to see the PPT, or do you want to directly jump into the games and stuff? I think we'll start with the PPT and we'll see, right? Okay. Okay. Uh, can you see the slides? Yes. 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 Okay. So the topic for today is, as you all already know, use of drama and education techniques in the classroom uh, at primary and pre-primary levels. Um, in my experience, drama and education techniques are actually more useful at primary and pre-primary levels because uh, children are very much interested in play at that age. Um, when they are in secondary and uh, high secondary schools, children don't like playing. They don't like imaginary games anymore, right? So at that point, primary and pre-primary level, they are very much into it. They are very much exploring the imaginary. So this is a very ideal set of group that we have here today that uh, the teachers of primary and pre-primary uh, who, are, who are already dealing with uh, such, such an imaginative uh, group of children. Um, they are interested in so many things. They are interested in uh, in makeup, they're interested in costume, they're interested in role plays, they're interested in playing games all the time. They have so much energy inside them. And at the same time, um, the syllabus and the books, the, the backpack is not so heavy. Uh, you know, the deadlines are not so uh, stringent. The marks are not that, the grades are not that important at that age. So I'm so glad that uh, we are going to look at this now and uh, that's such a very good group uh, first of all i would like to um, know all of you um, just your name and what uh, where are you from and what you do uh, if it's possible one by one could you please start this is this from control incident conference Thank you, sister. Uh, yes, can we get to know Pooja? I think there are some of my students from uh, JVM's pre-primary as well over here, right? Are all of you here or is it? Yeah, everyone is here. So oh, lovely. Great. Okay. Yeah. Could you just please tell your names? My name is Pooja Rathna. Thank you, Pooja. My name is Hafiza Goss. Hi, Hafiza. My name is Rachel Fernandez. Hi, Rachel. Yes? I'm sorry? Good afternoon. Good afternoon. My name is Monica Fernandez. How is oh, welcome, ma'am. Monica. I think Miss Susie is trying Good to afternoon. communicate to you. Good afternoon, ma'am. I'm Sister Susie Montero from St. Joseph Vaz School, San well, Welcome, sister. Yes. 
I think I recognize some people. Pooja Jalmi from G Games, right? Trishti Shetkar. Hello, ma'am. Hello. My nice name is Suvarna Shetkar. Hi, hi, Suvarna. Hello, my name is Suvarna. Good afternoon, ma'am. Hello, ma'am Monica. Hello, Suizal. Hello. Okay, I think some of you are uh, attending from class, and all of you are sitting together. Is it? Yes, ma'am. Nice. Ah, okay. So the e the echo will start. So yes. let's not. But keep your um mics open during some times. I'm going to say, open your mic like. And Mike, uh, unmute yourself. Then do that, okay? Because okay, in games we will need that. Hmm? Until then, it's all right. Okay. So, um, okay. Let's start then with the with our session. Uh, so I'll just give you a. Um, you must be wondering what drama in education is. So I'll just give you all a, a small introduction of what it is, and then we'll get to the point. Okay. So drama in education is a educational movement. Uh, is someone speaking someone trying to say something uh, can you can you mute yourselves for a moment hello hello my name is durga arni welcome durga we are going to uh, mute ourselves for a bit now then we will continue okay all right so um so drama in education is an educational movement uh, that incorporates drama into pedagogy so it's basically using the elements the tools the techniques uh the conventions of drama that theater artists use or dramatists use or mime artists use or musicians use to um actually teach scholastic subjects or actually explore what is there in the syllabus or um introduce children to new topics and new issues in the society and stuff like that all right basically explore um education with drama so it's integration of drama into pedagogy and it started in united kingdom in 1960s uh, when a group of actor teachers it it's it's called um it was a theater coventry okay um they started integrating drama into pedagogy through children's workshops and then they developed this pedagogy okay and uh, during the 1960s you may know a lot of uh, uh, during that time a lot of new educational styles were coming up so this was also one of them so in india this particular style uh, drama into pedagogy style drama in education or theater in education also we can, we can call it that came into india in uh, 1989 uh, via theater in education company in national school of drama new delhi so in theater in education company what they do is there are two uh, major things that they have to do they have to produce plays for children that are about educational subjects okay so through these plays their interactive plays they explore educational subjects and uh, they have to produce them and they have to uh, present them for children through festivals through uh, it, while traveling to schools uh, okay and a lot of different ways and the second part is through workshops of drama and education now this is the difference between theater and drama theater is something that is performed on stage so when it is being performed on stage we call it theater in education and when it is uh, practiced in a classroom we call it drama in education so that's why this workshop is drama in education and not theater in education but theater in education company also practices drama in education in which they basically organize workshops different sets of workshops for children um, through their schools i mean not separately through the schools itself they organize and they introduce children uh, 
like they basically facilitate children through a journey in which they explore self family education and society which basically covers their whole life right this is uh, what a child's whole life is self family education and society there's nothing beyond that at that age so this is what the workshops explore through different things like music dance and it's not like the teacher is teaching dance and the children are doing it no it is self exploratory it teachers are only facilitating children are doing it on their own they're basically doing uh, things that will help them understand self better understand education better understand society better so um, it is not production oriented you know the way um we say children's theater you know the what we call children's theater here in goa or all over india it's production oriented one director comes who's directed a lot of children's plays and then the, there are 15 children 16 children then there is casting the uh, director will cast the children into different roles they already have a script and they will do a production no this doesn't happen in drama and education or theater in education in theater in education the process is more important than production so even though there are like a set of 30 children or 40 children they will all be involved in the production process and they will decide what to do in a play they will explore the topics themselves they will have conversations they will um discuss each other's issues try to resolve them try to give solutions they will um paint they will draw they will do sketches they will figure out what the costumes will be for a particular they will they will be the boss of their situation basically all right and they will be the directors of the play they will be the actors of the play they will not have a script they will make their own script okay basically uh, about what their life is not what someone else has written so that is drama and education in short for you uh, okay so in this um, so in exploration of drama and education there is a lot of different kinds of tools and techniques and activities and conventions that dramatists have used that are useful in education as well that are useful with children as well that the facilitators um, just give the children to use and to sort of explore and uh sort of for warm ups for um integration for team related work for uh for basically understanding how to get into a character or um or even to understand what is happening in the society from each other's point of views so these games will help you do that they will not uh, the way it helps actors to become better actors no this this application is for the purpose of education it's not for the purpose of acting okay so you all don't have to worry uh, you all won't have to act at all i mean acting is inside all of us but the way we perform for stage of the way we perform for films is very different from the way we perform in classrooms and the way we um, make it useful for die okay there is no stage fear involved because you already know your children right so uh, don't worry it's not going to be a very acting focused course uh, but it's going to be uh, there is going to be role play so role play is the most important part of dii and the most important part of drama as well in general so we are going to have to do that and uh, be prepared <laughs> we are going to do that a lot uh, okay so uh, these techniques that we are going to use including role play they don't just help the pupils that is the students they don't, don't just help them to gain knowledge okay so it's not like um a teacher enters as a joker and introduces the children to the world of a king and what happens in the king's life and what happens in like, what happens in the battles and stuff like that that's and and over no it's not like that but the joker if the joke i'm just giving an ex example of joker here it could be any character um for example say the king himself enters the classroom and he comes with an issue that uh, you know in my kingdom people have started uh, disbelieving in me and they don't they don't have faith in me anymore and i don't know what to do and the children interact with the king to understand what are the problems of the kingdom and they give the king tips on how to improve the kingdom better so that is the purpose of dii not 
you know unilateral one sided transfer of knowledge but it's basically collaborative work okay so this will help the children to be inquisitive ki are what uh, is the issue of this king why are the people not having faith in him anymore what is the thing that they can do to help this person and they can it can make them really really um, they can brainstorm they can think beyond their uh, current syllabus or that what they are expected to uh, uh, currently and they can actually broaden their horizons of their mind and they can also learn how to voice their opinions you know not not just throwing opinions the way we see on tv these days i mean uh, it's very unhealthy right the way the world is functioning right now we see people do a lot of um, imposing of themselves but in this collaborative process they will also learn how to be their own person and at the same time not be harsh or be aggressive or impose themselves on other people but more more like a democratic setup more like a, a in a healthy approach they can uh, deal with such situations uh, right so let's come to the first important uh, part of i already uh, you can just show me a thumbs up if you are ready and am i audible am i going too fast Oh, ma'am. Uh, okay. Ma'am, could uh, you could you use the whole screen for your slide? Um. Yeah. Slide but the thing is, I won't be able to switch to the uh, G Meet in between. Oh, okay. Like okay. I'm doing right now. Fine. Fine. Okay. I I'm going to share the slide show with everyone later. Like I can share the PDF and you can share it with Fine. everyone also later because um, like the GVM students are going to need it. for their exam also and like for otherwise also all right uh, am i going to am i going too fast no no right. yes all right if yes. anyone has an issue they can just uh, raise their hand and if i'm not seeing the hand for a long time uh, ma'am goreti could you please uh, communicate yes. to me that yes. someone has a question okay and don't wait till the end to ask me questions you can stop me ask me the question we can resolve it and then we can go ahead okay okay um so um yeah it's working all right so uh, yeah let's go on to the first important part of drama and education uh and this is not just an important part of drama and education it's an important part of a process of any play also if you know production of a play begins with drama games like it's a, the best team building exercise so initially it used to be only used by actors but now it's used by everyone to you know for team building for uh, brainstorming for ice breaking for bonding uh, in in motivational sessions in all sorts of places you know and even in corporate spaces government offices doctors i know there are new doctor uh, sessions uh, one of my old mentors is doing them on uh, uh, she calls it the thespian stance and it's for doctors to explore their journey emotion etc through you know dra drama games and techniques so um, drama games play a very very important role in drama as well as drama in education uh drama games are there are many okay uh, i'll give you the resource for, to access like there are a lot of drama in education games that are available on this particular website it's called drama resource and you, uh, you will find a lot of them and you will find notes on how to play also like how to play which game some some of them have given the videos also but we are going to look at a few okay and it is it is the best way to get a group of people who are thinking different things okay everyone is thinking different things right there are 30 students in a class one of them is thinking about what's there in the tiffin one of them is thinking that they have not done their homework the other is thinking that you no know, the trees outside are so beautiful today the fourth one is like i fell down today my leg is hurting is it broken okay everyone has their own mind space and they enter a classroom and everyone's in the, scattered sort of in their own places right this but the drama games are the easiest and the fastest and the quickest way to get all of them focused into one place and you know uh, to get working together okay so uh, not just before um, 
using a drama technique but also before you know starting a normal class also if you just play one drama game everyone's attention is in one place and you know it will be a smooth class to function you won't have to ponder what are you thinking what are you doing and to stop talking and you know all of that will be eliminated eliminated because they, they all eyes will be on you all the focus will be in one place so um so there are a number of uh, drama games um some of them are uh, listed here like count to 20 follow the leader the, do you all know follow the leader somebody must have played follow the leader here right we we played follow the leader in class once yeah we played once i remember count to 20 also we played uh count to 20 is basically a, a game where an entire group says numbers from 1 to 20 without overlapping each other and without deciding who is going to say when so the moment you overlap you have to start again okay and that's like the best team building exercise because because um, you learn how to understand when someone's going to someone's going to talk uh, a lot of times we overlap each other without like realizing that that person was about to say something important and you know we cut them and we move on and then that person probably doesn't talk for the next 20 minutes and you know the, it continues its cycle so this game uh, in at, at least in a team where you have to work together you have to study together for a whole year you have to do a few assignments together in that setup this game will help you understand each other on a lot of levels like you will know when the next person is going to talk you will know when to put your voice forward okay you will know what to say when to say it because you will know what everyone is thinking in that particular group it's like it's it's a way to get everyone's wavelengths on the same level okay there is a game called action reaction it's a random fun game okay in a circle uh, a person throws an action to one person that person reacts that the person who reacts throws the reaction at some person and that person reacts to that reaction then it and it continues in the whole circle uh then there is something called sound stories which is more of a story building exercise but through sounds like um let's say uh, that someone makes the sound dhap 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 and then the other person is like and the fourth person is like Ooh. you can tell an entire story through these sounds that you make you know so um, there is that game and it it, it has to be you know it, like it's it's very creative with children especially because you don't know what the child is going to you know what the next sound is going to be so it can be really interesting and fun to observe that you know what is going to what story they are going to build uh, uh yeah just using sounds you can use claps and um, any any part of your body to make sound okay uh okay uh, are you all ready to play a game yes ma'am uh then turn on your videos i want to see your faces again i will come to the slide where we are playing the game and we have played this in class before so at least for a gvm students it should be um easy by now okay so you all know the rules you have to count to 20 one at a time you can't decide who is going to go first who is going to go second you can't decide that that's cheating and you can't overlap one another the moment you overlap we start again and we uh, we will start five times like we will uh, the restart option is there five times okay after otherwise we'll have to play this game the entire session so ready okay you all can turn your mics on everyone their mics on please 
ओके हाउ मेनी ऑफ यू ऑल आर इन द क्लास राइट नाउ ओके ऑल ऑफ यू ऑल आर इन द क्लास ओके डू वन थिंग एवरीवन जस्ट वन पर्सन टर्न देयर माइक ऑन जस्ट वन पर्सन टर्न देयर माइक ऑन एंड एवरीवन कम टू दैट पर्सन एवरीवन सिट टुगेदर Who is turning their mic on in the class? Oh my God! I get my work like a fire. Okay. All right. Okay. So, if one person speaks in that classroom, it will be audible to me, right? Yes. Yeah. All right. Okay. Okay. Ready to play the game? You all know the rules. You can start. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. No, 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 no. <laughs> that's cheating okay no what we have to do is one person will say one the other person will say two without deciding who the next person is going to be okay one person cannot say all the numbers how is that a team yeah. game man? good yes two three five sorry four I don't know. Bye. Bye. You skipped phone. Okay, start again. Start again. Okay, start again. One. Two. Three. Four. Ah, that was an overlap. Okay, we'll start again. Again. One, two, three, three. <laughs> but i'll still consider it because well we are not in the same space right now okay we are all in different places most of us at least uh we are sitting in different rooms and we are still getting each other with like which is amazing um clap for yourselves i wish there was uh, like in zoom there are like different ways to clap and heart and stuff like that it should have been there anyway um yeah uh, congratulations so in this game uh, you all may have thought of different ways to understand uh, when the next person is going to say something right and the one of the most obvious ways is who's going to say 
what is the one of the most obvious ways of online understanding who is going to say the number next anyone has any clue so we had this workshop okay for children during the pandemic online hmm? and the platform was zoom and um, it was like this and we were playing this game okay and uh, the first two day, days no this game failed because they could not they overlap each other the first two days of the workshop hmm? the third day it was a success everyone said their numbers on time and they were focused and they it was it was unbelievable because in 3 days that two being in different parts of the country sitting in different houses it's impossible to play this game but then we realized that we can see when the mics are turning on when someone's mic is turning on over here we can see okay so that is how they came to know okay this person is turning their mic on that means they were, the moment two people were turning their mics on no they were both turning it off because okay someone else is also turning it on they're like i'm turning it off like that that's how they won and children just like these always find different ways of winning this game not just this game a lot of they think out of the box they think not in the way that we are thinking their thinking is always so cunning like another level so um yeah you're going to have uh, your children your students finding many ways of playing this game properly they may like use signals and so what not they will do a lot of different gimmicks and tricks to win and it's going to be fun because it's cheating is also creative okay you can't cheat very easily in front of the teacher especially when the teacher is making you play games the teacher knows the rules and the teacher knows what can go wrong so they will find very very innovative and creative ways of cheating which is also fun okay um let's move on to the next game okay so in this game the game is called yes and okay and now you all saw no uh, now you all understood who is going to speak next and you all figured out after one there is two and someone is going to say two and then someone is going to say three similarly here also this is a game called yes and and one person will say a sentence any random sentence that begins the game any random person will follow and will agree to it will say yes and add to that and this story can this a story will build through this activity and it can go anywhere okay don't keep any inhibitions just be very very imaginative and it will be fun okay are you all ready we call it yes anding the the term is yes anding let's yes and and will be yes anding okay are you all ready who would like to start who would like to give the first sentence please raise your hand i'll stop presenting for a while so that i can see everyone okay who would like to start ma'am i'll start yes please once upon a time a girl named rima lived in the countryside very good okay yeah rachel uh, your name is rachel right yes ma'am once upon rachel said once upon a time a girl named Lima, Lima lived Lima. in the country side. Right. Lived in the countryside. Yes, and the girl had a very, very strong magical power. Yes, and 
she also had a very magical dog okay everyone has to say one sentence Okay guys the girl is magical the dog is magical what else can happen come on Okay I'll add but you all have to continue okay Yes she used this magical dog in a circus Yes and she used the magical dog in magical dog in a circus for the circus was a magical dog in a circus oh my god okay yes come on so on okay i'm going to start calling out names now uh do do dog has magical power he has a pure soul oh someone yes and all okay um suzy sister suzy right venesia Hello ma'am yes the magical dog suddenly disappeared oh. from the circus oh my god that's interesting yes who's got a yes and sister yes and i found the magical dog in my house <gasps> okay who's got a yes and Miss Susanna. Yeah. Come on, that was interesting. The house disappeared and entered in her house or your house. Yeah. Come on. You have a magical dog. There are so many possibilities here. Okay, think like a child. It's much more fun to think like a child. Come on. Okay, uh, Goretti, ma'am, could you please add? Oh, I. I had the little dog. Oh. And the dog made the sound. Oh. You know how they make that sound, no? Yeah. <laughs> yes, someone yes and ma'am now. Come on. Thank you ma'am. The dog was very happy 
because he received a lot of love. Oh. Okay, that seems like the end of the story here. Like mostly that is how stories end, right? But with children, it can go on and on and on and on, and the dog can reach so many places and do so many wonderful things, and you will be surprised. Start the same story in a, a primary class, and uh, <laughs> you'll be shocked. Okay, so um, yeah, this is a game that basically helps us to agree with other people and add like add original ideas to what they are saying. Hmm? Agreeing, we we see this very rarely nowadays. People don't agree with each other anymore. It's very difficult to sort of communicate with people nowadays. But this game will help you accept that okay, whatever is whatever this person is thinking is okay, right? I agree with this, and you know, I would like to add this. So it keeps who you are and accepts someone else, correct? It's a very healthy game to play. Hmm? And it hardly goes wrong. This game they use in comedy as well. Like, um, to, you know, sort of explore to what extent different comics can go. Like, basically, it's a theater game, right? So it's used in a lot of places. But in a classroom to build stories, etc., it's very, very fun. And it's very uh, innovative for the children to explore. Okay. Shall we move on? Yeah. Okay. I'll yes, ma'am. I'll start sharing the screen again. Okay. So, uh, yeah, imagination is the key for this game. In the previous game, the key was patience. And in this game, yes, and the key is imagination. All right. Uh, now we come to story building because that's what we were talking about just now. Uh, story building exercises are not just like in, a, in terms of games and all, but they're also useful for as warm ups and uh, as brainstorming as well. The game we played, yes, and okay. But storytelling can also be done through uh, songs, puppets, and mind. We've done this in class, we've done storytelling through song and puppet, right. Little bit of it, not a lot of it, but we've touched it, touched that part. Uh, so, in terms of DIE methods, uh, of course, stories can be written down, they can be improvised, they can be, the songs can be, story songs can be written. Um, you can use instruments, you can use guitars, you can use uh, something to, you know, just give the rhythm. Or you can use clap clapping or other sounds like you can make your own sounds in a class of course all of that is there but in di says the di doesn't say ki tell a story make a story and tell it it's not that's not the end in di the involvement of pupils is very very important so you cannot be the only one who's telling the story then it becomes everyone's story and everyone adds to it Everyone learns it. Everyone is making the song. In, in case you're telling a story to song. Everyone is interacting with the puppet. Even though they're not, you know, um, using the puppet. They are the ones who are interacting. They are the ones who are building that story. They are the, they're playing an important part in the story. They are the characters, important characters of the story. Okay. So, uh, if you're doing, uh, you're doing a DIE class doing a DI activity and you want to tell a story or you want to build a story in it, you make sure that um, you involve uh, the inputs of the students and not just, you know, be bossy and be like, oh, okay, this is the story and this is how it's going to go. And, you know, uh, if the child is saying, you are yes ending the child, but you're discarding that child's idea. Like, uh, that is also possible, right? And even while yes ending, you can do that. Uh, okay, so the the child is saying the king was very very poor, and you're like yes, and the queen, uh, 
left the king for being poor and the king became rich and then the whole story changes like it's you're not accepting it so you have to accept the thing that the child is giving you in yes ending and even otherwise when you're telling the story through a di process i'm not saying that you use di everywhere you can tell your stories also i mean i'm not saying that you shouldn't do that but i'm saying that uh if you are planning to use a drama convention and then in that you are using a storytelling or a story building exercise to sort of warm them up for the next activity uh such as uh, say you're going to give them uh, a few characters to improvise and in front of the class and they're going to do it on their own story building is a good exercise and they are involved and they are the ones who are building that story and they are the ones who are exploring their imagination and creativity that will prep them for the later improvisation part where they have to you know put in all of their energy and all of their creativity and they will be warmed up for that mentally as well as physically okay so uh, yeah so among all warm ups story building is the most um effective one in terms of if you are going to tell them to improvise scenes if you are going to tell them to uh, do role play and all in for that they are uh, their imagination is ready their creativity is like at the helm of you know entering the uh performance performance area or wherever you are going to ask them to uh, do the role play or improv improv sort of a thing so they are prepared for that other games yeah warm up and other activities are they are good but story building is the most effective because they are thinking of story lines they are thinking of character developments they are thinking of okay what can happen to a person what can a person do there you know on on those those lines now we will come to improv from story building is like that the connection okay uh, so improvisation is a skill but it can be uh, acquired like it can be uh, not everyone is born with improv skills most people learn the skill okay uh, it is something that that you can build and you can rely on for performances for characterization also for role play and understanding roles and understanding characters and understanding um situations basically hmm uh this will help portrayal of characters portrayal of situations also not just understanding also you know putting uh, the character out there um it can help you uh, and the children become um, ready to do impromptu things like okay you become a joker you become a king you are in a setup of a forest and play they are ready for it like if you develop the skill your children your students will be ready to do any sort of role play at any moment okay not just in classroom they'll they'll be ready uh, they'll slowly become ready you know it will be helpful for you for annual days and you know all sorts of other activities competitions whatever whatever so this will basically make them very very confident in themselves make them very um, impromptu ready like they'll be ready to do anything on the spot like they won't be scared of that so um there are many uh, games that help a person achieve a good improvisational skill one of them is action reaction we spoke about it before where in a circle one person throws an action at someone and the other person reacts to someone else and then that person reacts to someone else and it continues okay the action, reaction becomes action and then there is a reaction that also becomes action and it continues right so this is something that um teaches a person who wants to do improv what to do next how to respond because we are not we are always reacting right we are always reacting to something or the other like right now i feel like i'm talking to myself but well um we are always reacting to something or the other but um we seldom think that okay in the same situation 
someone else may react in some other way right um, because we don't know like we don't we have not seen other people react to similar situation but in action reaction game you see that you see that happen okay uh, for example if i am crying as an action and someone else is uh, consoling me as an uh, as a reaction someone else may be angry with me for the same action someone else may just ignore me for the same action someone else may laugh at me for the same action you know you see uh, an array of different reactions to one particular action and this makes you understand like different characters right in improv you need to have different you need to be able to make different characters so this basically helps us understand what are the different kinds of reaction different people can give to one particular situation and different improvisations so will give different sort of uh, ro uh, different roles will give different sorts of reactions another game is status game uh, now this game is long but i'd like to play this with you all i don't know if uh, you are up for it okay maybe we don't have the time for it it seems okay uh, so i'll explain to you all what it means status game is, is just like action reaction but in terms of social status in this game what we do is we form a circle and one person plays the role of someone let's say oh, this person is a police constable who is uh, doing a round at night the person who walks next has to be someone who's superior to that police constable who's doing a round and they have to have a um, sort of a status duel not actual duel but they have to have a conflict hmm? this game is very very uh, effective while you are doing um, theater of the oppressed also uh, so in this and then the person who comes next uh they make the person who came first go away in some way then that person changes into another character so one person plays two characters here one that they enter with and the second one that they become the second one that they become is again interrupted by a third person who comes with another superior character and they have a, some sort of a conversation and th this person leaves this person third person assumes another character and the game continues did you all understand what i said or should i explain it in some other way Did you all understand what I just said? Not getting it. I'm, I feel like I'm talking to myself. Someone please talk to me. Yes, my instructions were clear. Okay. Uh, I'll, in short, I'll tell you all again. So there is A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. Okay. There are so many students or children in one circle. A will assume a role of police constable. B will become... Uh, the superintendent of police go there and scold him for taking a bribe and dismiss him a will go away now b the superintendent of police will now become a um, domestic worker the domestic worker will be doing the cleaning job and whatever the lady of the house that is person d will walk in or c c will walk in and uh, give her her salary and ask her to go like her work is done appreciate her or something whatever or the scold also it can go anyway so this person will go right then this how uh, this lady of the house she will um, she will become a school teacher then person d will assume the role of a headmaster and come and discuss some issue with her with about something and then they ask her to leave this person will go then this headmaster will become a aeroplane pilot okay and the uh, this person 
the other person the person e now right the person e will come inside and inside the circle and become like oh you are off your duty now ah now this is the co-pilot oh your duty is done now it's my turn and this will he will relieve this person this person will leave and this person will be now playing some other role okay that's the trajectory you become a role someone else comes you relieves you of your role and that person assumes a different role then another person comes to relieve and this use activity is used to understand and explore different social relationships like there are so many different characters meeting each other in this right so just like the action reaction game wherein we try to understand different ways of like different people react to the same situation in this we understand the different kinds of characters that interact with each other and the different ways in which they interact with each other in the society right understood the game right so it's very very helpful for improv this game this will help you understand the interactions also and this will help you play them out in different ways also and like yeah it makes you creative uh yeah okay uh so there are other things that help us getting into a uh, lot of people may not may not agree with this but i strongly believe that this should be practiced in classrooms especially in primary classes where there is a box just like we have toys no um, you all know that they, they have toys in a pre primary right just to play like for play time similarly they should have like other thing like something to wear like something to throw on capes and uh, crowns and whatever like things that that help children get into different kinds of roles and sort of explore their personality and other people's personalities and stuff like that uh say different kinds of props and uh you know even if it is just one prop you know if it is like a pipe okay a child will use it as a binocular a child will use it as a magic wand a child will um you know have numerous ways of looking at uh, just a piece of pipe uh so children have that and we just need to provide them with that just one small pipe so whatever weird objects we have with us whatever um things we think are useless for us we can keep like safe things of course not a knife or not something that they can harm themselves with but some things that are like just like a pair of glasses we kept like plastic glasses without the glass inside mm. uh, a piece of stick uh like i said a pipe or say a lipstick or you know things like that that are that are harmless and they can use in different ways for different characters so in a box inside the classroom and whenever you are doing this whenever you giving them play time you also give them this kind of play time so that they can explore different characters and otherwise they can use it in role plays and when you are doing improv in class or when you are doing um, uh so you're doing some other game in which it's required they can use it and it ha also helps them be confident uh with themselves with their bodies and with their self expression also uh so a lot of practitioners encourage this and i'm one of them so i'm encouraging you to have this box then it will also make them feel responsible it's like their own property right the class property they'll try to protect it if someone is like uh trying to break something some students may they'll be protective about it they'll be like no don't break it it's ours you know it will develop a sense of responsibility and belongingness also okay um now improvisation can now the way we used different games to do good improvisation improvisation can help us do good other techniques okay so improvisation used in many 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 drama techniques uh, most of the drama techniques including role play have improv in them uh, so i've given some names like freeze frames 3d living pictures and freeze frames are basically um, so you make groups of five or six students and you give them three random nouns okay or three things like any three words you give them and you ask them to make freeze frames out of them 
So in three strains, they'll represent these three things, these three words that you've given them using just their bodies. Okay. And then you can make them live. Like you can tell them to make the frames first and then you can ask them to make them live so that they can act the whole thing out. Um, 3D living pictures is similar, but in 3D living pictures, you use famous pictures. So famous pictures can uh, that, that are already available to them. For example, uh, uh, say there is a picture of a garden in the textbook where children are playing, where birds are flying, where there are butterflies. So in 3D living pictures, you ask them to recreate the picture from the textbook onto the in front of the class. And then you make it live. In freeze frames, it's not like that. The picture is not known. You give them a random word like traffic. Traffic is different everywhere, no. But in textbook, the picture will be the same for everyone. So that is the basic difference. Hmm? In freeze frames, you can give them topics like uh, cre uh, create traffic, create sunset, uh, uh, create a, a hiking trip or something like that and then you can ask them to connect to the three in a story the once they've made the freeze frames they connect it in a story and it will be a new story that they made uh, in 3d living pictures it's basically to understand the context the um, already content whatever is there in the textbook it's um, to understand that better uh, that's the difference okay so Unless and until a child knows to improvise, like on the spot, the teacher has given me, how will I become a son on the spot? So unless and until they know how to improvise, they probably will not be able to do a freeze frame or a 3D. So first improvisation. Hmm? Before that, games. Games are first, then improvisation. Games will help you improvise. Improvisations will help you get into other things, like other things you are getting to now. But before that, let's play a game. Okay, so everyone be ready to be put on the spot. Okay, ready? Okay, so I'm going to call out two or three people. I'm going to give them characters on the spot and a situation or a place. And they have to improvise their as characters, as the characters that I've given them. And they make an interesting story for us. Okay, without holding any inhibitions, without being, oh no, I am shy, I won't be able to do it. Okay, ready? Okay, I'm just gonna like randomly pick names here. Uh, I'd like Claire, Claire Azaredo, and Fatima Sheikh. And Manisha Kamankar to kindly switch on their cameras. Fatima Sheikh, Claire, and Manisha. Thank you, Claire, for putting on the camera. Um, what about the others? Manisha and Fatima. I think they're not there. I don't know. Quality, ma'am, are they there? Okay, who's there? Claire is here already. Who else would like to? I need two people. Okay, don't be shy, Claire. Don't worry. It's a child's play. Let's take Sister Susie. Okay, let's take Sister Susie. And who else can we take? And Teacher Brenda. Teacher Brenda? Sister Susie and Teacher Brenda, could you please turn on your um, cameras and mics? Thank you so much. Okay, are you all excited? 
so this uh, it's a, it's, a, it's a fairly easy thing to do improv okay uh, we already do this because we are teachers we always improvise so don't worry uh, and um, i'm going to give you okay we have two of you at least chalo let's start the game there has to be an interaction between the two of you as your characters and in a given situation or a place okay that's the rule uh, i'm giving you all characters you all decide which character who will play okay okay uh, we have a robot okay a robot like a very intelligent robot huh? like a robot that can do lots of different things and and a bookworm a book that eats uh, a worm that eats books hmm a bookworm and a robot on a playground and you all can turn on your mics and you all can discuss who is going to play which role and then you can start bookworm yes a bookworm and a robot on a playground yes who is the next yes claire and uh, sister suzy So, which role would you like to play, Claire? Robot. Robot. Okay, robot. And uh, Sister Susie will play the bookworm. Bookworm, yeah. All right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, y'all can start. Y'all can start the improv. You will have to turn your mics on, or we won't be able to hear anything. Sister Suzy, your mic is off. Yeah, hello. Yes. We just have to say some sentences, hello. Yeah, to each other. Okay, to so robot. Okay, I think there are some issues. Is there a problem? Sister, could you switch on your mic? Yes. Yes. Now it's on. 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 We could not hear you, sister. Now we can start. I I I can I didn't follow what to say now that. It's up to you. What do you think a bookworm will say to a robot on a playground? On a playground. Yeah. Come on, you just give a kick. Let's play football. Let's play, give a kick. Let's choose a team to play football. <laughs> Okay. Can you get the ball? Claire, could you please put your camera and mic on? Yes. Hello? Yes. Please respond. 
can i get a question please robot can you play football let's choose a team come on let's play the Hello? football game can you get a ball uh yes Okay, come on, Claire. I think she's very she's too shy. You have to be shameless. Okay, who can who can respond? Who can respond to Sister Susie as the robot? She's she's in uh, she's uh, established a very interesting premise. The bookworm is asking the robot to play football. It's very very interesting. You can do a lot with it. Goreti, ma'am, are you saying something? Oh yes, why not? I was waiting to play football. Come on, let's not waste time. Okay, Robert, come on, let's get the ball. Here, let's see. Choose the team. Oh, our team is ready. Team is ready. Yes. Okay. Can you start the game? Who will be is the there... referee? I want to see the referees. Okay. We have the lion who is going to be the referee. Okay. Yes. I hope it's okay with you and your yes, team. Yes. Yes, my team is ready. Okay. And here we go. Three, two, one, kick! Yes, goal! Oh, that was pretty fast. <laughs> okay, that's team. lovely, lovely, you guys, lovely, <laughs> wonderful. Yeah. So, um, see, even even though we are online, a lot happened, right? You all imagined it. Everyone else, did you all imagine what they were saying? Did you all uh, listen to them and imagine what they were saying? Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. 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 So it was fun, right? Even even it when it was online and no real action was happening, even it was even then their voices uh, helped us imagine the story that they were trying to put up there. Uh, lovely, wonderful. Uh, five stars for y'all. Uh, thank you. Okay, so. Um, Fatima, you've raised your hand now. It's kind of late. Uh, you'll have questions. Do you all have questions, Carlotta and Fatima? You'll have raised your hands. Do you have questions? If you uh, can't turn your mic on, you can also message uh, the in-call message the question to me all right we can uh, now uh, now let's proceed okay there's very less time left let's proceed okay now we are, we have come at role play now the way they did the improvisation it was sort of a role play okay so they played their own roles they, in a given situation role play is basically that okay but it is one of the most used tools of drama and education and it can be turned into almost any scenario there is no limit to using role play it can be used in any place in any sort of a situation um, to explain any sort of uh, phenomena or any sort of textual reference anything okay um, and it basically uses improvisation we just saw an example okay essentially uses improvisation to assume roles of it can be roles of people it can be roles of things it can be roles of any objects it can be roles of uh, 
a particular it can be uh, a role of rainfall it can be a role of a scientist it can be a role of hitler it can be a role of a cow it can it can be anything okay to address any subject hmm? this is a very simple activity and it's the first step to get into more complicated and more intensive techniques like teacher and role like hot seating mantle of the expert role in the wall there are so many different kinds of techniques drama and education techniques that use role play in them okay in a particular classroom situation where <clears throat> the teacher is assuming a role okay and the teacher is involving pupils directly in that particular experience uh, uh, with a certain topic in mind of course that, that situation is called teacher in role okay the teacher is in role the teacher is involving the class while being in role not the teacher's role someone else's role but as a teacher okay that particular thing is called teacher in role it's a drama and education convention hot seating is also another drama and education convention but here the teacher in role the teacher of course is still in role but the teacher is encouraging a student to assume a role of a particular person from history or a particular person from current uh, life like maybe a politician a uh, role of uh, an animal role of something that is going to sit in a hot seat in front of the entire classroom there's going to be a chair kept in the entire uh, in the in front of the class the chair is going to be referred to as the hot seat and the student as the particular character or that particular thing will come and sit on the chair and everyone in the class including the teacher in role will ask questions and the character on the hot seat will have to answer those questions this can be used um uh to sort of explain historical characters more in a more interesting way uh such as you make gandhi ji sit on the hot seat and everyone is asking him trivial questions about life about how he came up with ahimsa and all that and the student is already uh, well versed with gandhi so you have to prepare the student first like in terms of you have to tell give them this assignment that okay you are going to play gandhi ji's role tomorrow in the class so you have to go home today and you have to study don't give them notes don't give them prepared notes that way the knowledge will be limited let the child think what kind of questions can come from the peers because you will not know what kind of questions the students are going to ask they will know better they their imagination is like more broad in that sense so they will go home and they'll study about gandhi as much as possible and they'll come and they'll play the role of gandhi they don't know where the costumes or anything maybe one symbolic thing like the glasses or the lathi or something like that and this hot seat will happen you'll have to say okay now we have gandhi ji amit stars and gandhi ji has agreed to answer as many questions as possible in this class so are we excited to ask gandhi ji meet gandhi ji in person and ask them ask him the questions that we have thought about all our lives we've tried to understand gandhi for so many years but none of us could and today we have the opportunity to understand gandhi better so let's get into it let's ask him all the most the questions that have bothered us for over the years and let's get the answers and start okay and then then the teacher and role here the teacher can get into the role of a journalist or a lawyer or an interrogating police officer or anything basically that will help the teacher in role facilitate this entire conversation okay so uh, we've understood teacher in role we've understood hot seating now the third thing that is a uh, very very important and a very very crucial drama and education tool which is very very time taking as well it's going to take many classes to understand mantle of the expert uh and it's going to, it's going to take many classes to conduct this activity but in this activity an entire class 
the teacher is also in role and the entire class is also in their own roles they assume characters suitable to the to that situation and there is a question to solve there is a problem to resolve there is there are ends to meet there are uh, there is a project to do and the entire class and the teacher everyone being in their role they seek collective resolution and this activity can go on for days uh, let us look at a video of someone who invented or someone who started practicing mental of the experts and the link is there you all can watch the rest of the video later but just a small part of that video we will see now okay oh. I'm not able to share it. Can you see? Ma'am, it's not visible. At least I can't see it. Okay, it's not. Uh... It's not being shared. I'm so sorry. Uh, you all can watch the video. Uh, it's basically about mantle of the experts, the entire process of mantle of the experts, um, in divided in four classes by the founder of mantle of the experts. Uh, her name is Dorothy Hethcutt, and she uh, started this. She was a teacher, and this is a uh, her. This particular video is about her starting a shoe factory in classroom. 
and there is no leather and there are no needles and there is there is no thread and there is absolutely nothing but there are designs and there is imagination and there are ideas and there are practical resolution to real issues and everything happens so smoothly and if you see the video you will be able to understand how mantle of the experts can be used to teach a particular concept or to, to teach a particular process in class okay and it can go for for over 3 4 classes 3 4 lessons but it's going to be fruitful because they'll understand each and every bit of that particular concept um okay so uh whilst we come towards the end uh, these are the few steps that are uh, useful for understanding uh, and practicing role play okay let me share the screen again uh okay can you see this now yes yes okay so uh, the first step is identifying the situation so in uh, in any role play you will have a situation or a place or something that is happening right so understanding that then you can add details to it you can add okay in this situation this thing can also happen like uh, for example let's say there is a forest fire during a forest fire it can also start to rain right it usually does after a forest fire there is always a rain Okay, no. So you can add that detail. Okay, you can add lightning to it. You can add um, birds uh, suddenly making loud noises. Birds do that when there is uh, an abnormal situation. So that. Then there is assigning of roles. Then you can decide in these details who is going to be playing what role, who is best suited for which role. And it is not casting. It is understanding. Uh, between the group among the group members then acting out the scenario you act it out as per you you have decided and at that in while doing that you also improvise because there is when this is impromptu things this is not practiced rehearsed things like what happens on stage this is something that you've done now this is the role play this is improvisational technique so things are going to change when they are going to be acted out be accepting of that okay don't dismiss things don't scold okay we had decided this why did you do that that should not happen in road plays okay then you act out the scenario and then you discuss what you have learned from the process maybe someone will do something that you did not expect while being in that role okay something may change completely you may learn something like out of the world while doing that um and that is what road plays are for they are for learning they are for learning something that you did not expect to learn okay while consciously putting effort to learn something okay then um, then we have teacher and role okay teacher and role is something uh, that you have to have full control over okay if you are a teacher in role if you are a teacher playing a princess let's say for smaller classes kg and all they really love princesses so if you are a teacher playing a princess you have to know when to switch out of the princess's role and you have to inform the students that you are going to switch into a princess's role before you do that hmm? don't suddenly spring up on them that okay i'm now a princess no you have to tell them okay now i'm going to go and i'm going to come in as a princess and i'm going to be me but i'm also going to be a princess uh is it confusing interesting they have, they have to be fully aware that okay this is what is going to happen and we can also do that like i can also be me and i can be a carpenter and it's okay hmm uh it creates sort of a conducive environment for them to explore this kind of new things okay and they will play along really well Like they will play along when they know what's happening. Otherwise, they may get confused. They may even get traumatized as to oh, 
oh no what just happened okay don't spring things on them inform them prepare them and then characterize okay um you can use teacher and role to introduce new topics or you can do it as a practice like you can be teacher and role very often like it's up to you if you like doing that if your students enjoy that if they they're learning better if you do, when you do that then why not um but you, you make sure that you're encouraging dialogue when you're doing that okay so when you're in role don't just keep talking on your own you also like what i'm doing right now i'm feeling horrible that no one's responding but uh, anyway but accept responses practice yes ending yes ending helps while you are while you are in a role as a teacher yes ending is a very healthy practice uh, otherwise also in classroom even when you're not in role but it helps especially when you're in role okay practice trust and collaboration um uh, working together it should be the principle it should not be like one sided uh, teaching it should be everyone is included everyone's learning everyone's teaching each other everyone's exploring new things and you are also trusting each other while doing that you can't be oh no you don't do this let that person do no that will break that child's uh, capacity of understanding you know what can happen next as a character uh practice trust you tell them that okay i trust you to be a carpenter i trust you to do this role you can take this person's help if you want but get me the measurement of a normal person's belt tomorrow whatever like whatever it is that you are going to uh do in that particular class uh you are very important as a teacher in role to the class as are the students okay just keep that in mind that everyone's just equally important when you're doing the i uh, and encourage expression if someone's expressing something let them another thing is always uh, always put a time uh, bind everything by time okay we are going to do this in five counts one two you have to be in control of time because uh if they please they can go on for as long as they want but you have to practice this discipline time is like it's a very crucial thing it like you have 30 minute classes or you have 45 minute classes that's eight right during the day this is all you can do um and maybe if you give 5 minutes for a particular role play like impromptu role play they may not be able to do their best in 5 minutes but appreciate them and give them tips don't dismiss their ideas but give them that time limit every time you tell them to do a particular thing give them a time limit even if it is a day like tomorrow i want this and tomorrow is a deadline you may be flexible about it later but it has to be bound by time okay don't just leave everything open okay these are the few tips that i had to give you about a uh, mantle of the experts of course i have explained to you and you can um, after watching this video this particular link uh, you will be able to answer this question uh, since we could not watch it right now we could not answer this question right away but i'm sure you will think about it you will think about how to use this in classroom yourself uh, okay what is this is very very short i'm just going to finish it in brief using dance music movement all of these things that are performance related larger than life expressions voice modulation good voice modulation ups and downs in voices good projection projection loud voice these things can contribute in making the di application the games the tools the techniques really interesting and really effective uh the only requirement the ultimate requirement is that the children the teachers remain as facilitators and they help they facilitate the students to explore they don't judge without judgment while encouraging learning new things and also improving so you give tips on what you can do better you don't criticize oh this is what you did was this was bad okay uh you can appreciate and then add 
yes and right remember yes and yes and is a very very helpful tip okay the teacher must achieve the kind of authoritativeness the teacher has to be the authority they have to respect the teacher the teacher has to be the authority that allows the pupils to be in charge teacher is authority but the students are also in charge they are also learning on their own they are the agents of their own learning they are being respect to, re respectful towards each other in that particular learning process these are the things to keep in mind uh disrespect will break things students are not in in charge anymore di will not happen they are not learning on their own unilateral teaching won't work it won't be di they are not learning anything it's just drama it's not education <laughs> okay so these are the things that you have to keep in mind okay to for it to work out as a process um hint student engagement is the key okay keep that in mind and everything will work out for you these are some of the references and resources of course i will share this ppt with ma'am goreti and she'll share it with all of you whoever has registered and uh, you all can use this you all can use the resources you can use the link that i've shared before and um, you all can contact me goreti ma'am will share my contact also with you or i'll just add it in this ppt and um, if you all want you all can contact and we can have a discussion about this all right i think we are done if there are any questions or if there are there, there's any uh anyone would like to share anything yes ma'am uh so i'm requesting the participants to unmute yourself and ask the question if anyone wants i think in uh is there anyone i think you told us wonderful things uh, ma'am various techniques um i wonder how much we are actually using in our classroom nevertheless if we were not there's always a, a new beginning we can always start and look, listening to so many techniques and ideas that you proposed and the tips that you gave i was feeling like as though i i was uh, or rather i would be very happy to be a little child child and sit in the pre primary class we are going to have drama in in, uh, in the class everybody is going to enjoy it definitely i'm glad you think so i hope it works out i hope everyone like it's i know it's difficult it's, it's very easy to learn a technique and then you know it somewhere stays behind i hope people start practicing it and it will be really fruitful you should please try it that's all i have to say actually yeah i'm sure i'm sure since they were given this opportunity to you know to get such ideas from you it it's wonderful i'm sure they're going to use it because it is something different and they're going to not only uh, it's going to be excitement in the class uh, i mean students will be just wanting to listen to the teacher and in the bargain they're going to learn not only lessons but so many other things like creative thinking and they're going to really think out of the box like how those games which we played it made us think and um, and that's how we have to instill creativity in our little minds uh, so it looks like uh, nobody has a uh, any special question to you ma'am so okay either they understood everything or they didn't understand anything so uh, i don't know which which they were the techniques definitely i'm sure uh, they are not difficult to use but we must uh, somewhere no, yeah. begin with Yeah, actually, they're very easy. You just have to lose the inhibition, like you know, you have to be free. A very interesting session it was. Thank you so much, ma'am. Yes, uh, the feedback link is in the chat box. I request each participant to fill the feedback form and submit it. Once you submit, you will get a certificate. so the link uh, kindly do that now and uh, yeah. in box and all is there any question okay so i i think uh, it's time to wind uh, i take this opportunity to thank our 
resource person, my mantra bide, for taking time out to be with us, Mother. to share her knowledge and her expertise in DIE. And she explained us various techniques, uh, which uh, we are going to use, ma'am, for sure. And we can try out in our own classroom tomorrow itself when we go back to school. It was indeed an informative and insightful session. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, I also would like to thank our principal, Dr. Jojen Matthew, uh, who has always been the source of guidance to us all here in our college. My gratitude also goes to the teaching and non-teaching staff of GVM's Dr. Dada Vaidya College of Education and a, and a word of appreciation to Mr. Nikhil Dicholkar for working behind the scenes to make this webinar happen. Thank you so much, Nikhil. Uh, thanks to the principals of, of various schools for deputing their teachers for our webinar. Lastly, thanks to the participants for joining in for this webinar. Wishing you all the best in your teaching career. Kindly fill the feedback form. I will wait for some time in case anyone is not filled. You have the link in the chat box. Kindly click on the link and fill the feedback form. It was wonderful to have all of you on board. Thank you and have a good evening. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you. Thank you, teachers.